we're here to protect you and the, and the ones that you love. It's a good feeling to know that our efforts aren't going unnoticed. It actually brought tears to my eyes to know that we have this support. You're welcome. I must just say, you're welcome. It's stressful, but we're not going anywhere. Welcome to another edition of Bucknell Women's Golf Through the Decades. Tonight we have the decade of the 2000s. We've got a great group of young women joining head coach Lisa Francisco and one of our current student athletes on the golf team, Erin Holmes. Erin is a senior from Cumberland, Maine, and we thank her for being on tonight's session. I want to thank Geisinger as our sponsor for tonight's event. Geisinger has done a great job throughout the pandemic and they also do a fantastic job day day out with our student athletes here at Bucknell. So thank you to Geisinger for all that they do. My name is Todd Newcomb and I want to get right to it and introduce our guest for tonight's session. The first guest from the class of 2003 is Jess Hetrick and I'm introducing our, our women tonight by their maiden name so that you following along at home will recognize them from your time at Bucknell or following the program. So Jess Hetrick, class of 2003, she was a four-year letter winner and the team captain in 2002 and 2003. She led the team in scoring average in the fall of 2001, the spring of 2002, and the spring of 2003. Her best individual conference championship finish was 24th at the 2003 Big South Championship. She was selected to the NCAA Division I All-Independent Second Team in 2002. She was select selected to the Big South Academic All-Conference Team in 2003. Jess won the Ronald J. Pete Pedrick Award at the Athletic Department Senior Awards Dinner. Our next guest from the class of 2007 is Terry Schlang. She was a four-year letter winner and she led the team in scoring average in the spring of 2005. Her best individual conference championship finish was 18th at the 2004 Big South Championship. She was selected to the Big South Academic All-Conference Team in 2007, and she was a two-time member of the Big South Presidential Honor Roll. Our next guest from the class of 2008 Emily Chiodo, she was a four-year letter winner. Her best individual conference championship finish was 15th at the 2008 Big South Championship. She was selected to the Big South Academic All-Conference Team in 2008 and was also a member of the Big South Presidential Honor Roll all four years of her career at Bucknell. Our next guest from the class of 2008 as well is Amy Lockney. She was a four-year letter winner. She led team in scoring average in the fall of 2004, the spring of 2006, the fall of 2006, and the spring of 2007. Her best individual conference championship finish was fifth at the 2005 Big South Championship. She was all Big South selection in both 2005 and 2007, and she was a three-time member of the Big South Presidential Honor Roll. So coach, we've got a great group of women on the call. I'm gonna turn it over to you and let's have some fun. First of all, do y'all have any eligibility left? Because that was really impressive. <laughs> Unfortunately, I still, I still compete, but just not. I in know, Amy, I know. I see you all over the state of Pennsylvania, your name and, and whatnot. That's awesome that you still compete. Um, congratulations to you all. Again, I would like to welcome you guys uh, to join us. Aaron and I, we've been really looking forward to this and, and I don't, get to see too many of you. Um, I've, I've met only a few of you. So Jessica, it's good to see you again. I met Jess. Uh, thanks to see you. Alumni event. So um, thanks for being with us. Um, I guess, I guess my biggest question is, Terry, we'll start with you. Take me back to the beginning. How was the recruiting experience um, for you and how did you choose uh, Bucknell? Oh, I might have one of the most bizarre recruiting experiences of all of the students that appear at Bucknell. Um, so I, I actually went to a ski academy for high school. So my focus all through high school was on competitive skiing. And I started playing golf when I was about 15 um, and played in the state of Vermont. And when I was about 16, I was like, I am naturally much better at this sport of golf than I am at the sport of ski racing, which I had been really focused on my entire life. Um, so kind of pivoted my focus, but kept skiing. and thought about the fact that I was like, do I really want to be a division one skier in college? Or do I actually want to pursue the sport that I seem to have a knack for naturally? Um, so I was not officially recruited. I essentially found Bucknell myself and reached out to the coach. And Jess actually was a senior. I came down and visited in, it would have been actually February of my senior year. So I applied as part of the irregular admissions process. 
didn't apply early, had never seen Bucknell prior to my senior year of high school, um, drove myself down from Vermont because it was a boarding school. So my parents had never seen Bucknell either. And I was on my drive home and I called them and I was like, I think I want to go to this. I hope I get in. I hope I get in. I think the coach likes me. Um, and I really want to go to this school. And my parents showed up the first day of my freshman year and they were like, good choice. We approve. Um, so that's my very weird recruiting experience. <laughs> that's funny. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Emily, how about you? So a little different than Terry uh, in that I grew up an hour and a half uh, from Bucknell. So on my way to my grandparents' house, we would pass by this beautiful school on Route 15 amongst all the other things that you get past on Route 15. So um, Bucknell for me was always something that was in my purview and something that I just fell in love with. And um, my home head golf pro actually went to college with Kevin Jameson. Um, so he reached out to him to say, you know, this girl has a weird looking swing. It's not natural, but she'll work her butt off and be a great player for you. So um, he took a chance on me. I went early decision. Um, was very fortunate to get in um, and just so grateful for the whole experience but um, I had that feeling when I saw Bucknell and I still have that feeling today I get a little teary and a little weepy so it was that feeling from day one <laughs> that's awesome Amy what about you I guess I'm a little more similar to Terry actually so I started playing golf like pretty late I was 14 I've been playing every other sport I got too short um, my dad finally taught me golf, um, and I ended up getting on the boys team by junior year, kind of what I was doing. And by senior year, I, I played very well, but by that time, I feel like most people were recruited. I feel like a lot of colleges recruit junior year. Um, I also was interested in biomedical engineering. So I started looking at schools I could play golf at that have biomedical engineering, which was actually very new at Bucknell. I was on the second class. And I found out about Bucknell because we were um, really close family friends with the, the golf coach at Kutztown, who I played with at my home course. And he's like, I know you're never going to come to Kutztown. You should check out Bucknell. We usually play there every year. And it just was a great fit all around. Um, I felt like I wouldn't be sitting on the bench, but there were people to challenge me. It had the engineering education. It wasn't too far away from home because I'm from Allentown. And uh, actually, I didn't get as teary eyed as Emily did on my first visit. It was raining, but we came back for another like um, students weekend and it was just glorious and the sun was shining and I'm like, okay, going early decision and That's cool. All right, Jess, last but not least. <laughs> well, since I think I'm part of the original recruiting class, because the first the first team that played um, under Coach Brad Tufts, they were um, pulled together by reviewing admissions applications on who played golf. So that's the class of uh, 2002. Uh, my class, 2003, was the first recruiting class. And um, you know, very similar. I think I hosted half of you during my four years of school as you came to visit um, and uh, really liked Bucknell, the idea of Bucknell. It was the northernmost school I looked at. And every time, uh, you know, I was doing the college comparison and looking at schools in Florida or South Carolina, my dad would add travel dollars to any time, you know, I thought about, oh, if you come home from Thanksgiving, okay, it costs X, it costs Y to come home President's Day, maybe you're not going to come home then. Um, and then also, you know, the value of the Bucknell education really came into play. I could play, you know, at the school and contribute to the team, but also come away with an incredible education. And I always say that golf afforded me the opportunity to, to walk away with an incredible education. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Um, Todd, we going to Aaron now? How are we doing? You can ask, you can ask a second one. Okay. Aaron. Yep. I guess um, I, I actually missed the first question. I didn't scroll up far enough. Sorry about that. But um, how about um, update us on your personal life, where you are, where you live, your career, your family, stuff like that. Terry, we'll just go back to you. Good. 
Um, so I am based in Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, I've been living here for about seven years now. I am married. I have a son, a husband, a dog, a cat, um, lots of different things keeping me busy on any given day. And I work for Lululemon at our head office here in Vancouver. I've been with Lululemon for about 10 years now. I started in our retail stores um, and I now work in our retail operations department. Oddly enough, in 2020, I actually lead all of our COVID-19 response work. So it's been a very busy year. And I know the like serious intricacies and nuances of what's happening right in Pennsylvania even. We were just talking about it today. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I have found myself after all these years. And I don't play nearly as much golf as I would like to. I wish there was more time for that in, in the days. I'm not sure any of us really do anymore. I know. <laughs> Emily, how about you? I actually live where Amy grew up. So I am probably 15 minutes from her favorite friendlies in the entire world. So I pass <laughs> Which hopefully doesn't close. And give a little wave, um, <laughs> which, you know, I still, Amy, I throw back to you every time I see it. So um, my husband and I are up in the Lehigh Valley. Uh, he uh, is doing his surgical residency at a local hospital here. So um, moved us up from Philly up to this area and absolutely loving it. Um, Amy, I know we poked fun of you for a lot of times over Allentown, but it is quite lovely um, and nice to be just kind of close to everything. Uh, I started with UBS as an intern my junior year out of Bucknell and haven't left. So either something's wrong with me or I just am too lazy to move, but uh, <laughs> absolutely love it. Uh, I run our Bucks County market. Um, so really, you know, working with financial advisors and their support team members and just absolutely love working with clients every day. But um, for me, it's my husband and I, uh, we met at Bucknell. So we started dating our freshman year all the way through. So I uh, got married on campus. So maybe that's why I get a little teary still uh, when I see campus and see the chapel. So Zach and I have been married for a long time now uh, and no kids, but a dog and Terry, we have two cats. So they certainly keep us busy. <laughs> Great. Uh, Amy? Well, I'm I feel very validated that Emily, you know, loves my hometown because it is great. We go back all the time. I even quarantined there for four months um, with my parents, so <laughs> that was great. Um, I actually live in uh, Jersey City, New Jersey, so right across the river um, from Manhattan. Um, I started off in Hoboken, which I always thought was a funny name. I actually found out about Hoboken from uh, Mr. One of our teammates, uh, Catherine. Um, but I've been here for 12 years now and change. Um, I actually somehow went from biomedical engineering into finance. Um, I did not do an internship. I'm at Goldman Sachs. Um, I did an engineering like research uh, position and then uh, Goldman came to recruit engineers and I'm like, oh, I don't know who they are, but sounds interesting. <laughs> and here I am 12 and a half years later. Um, and yeah, I don't know, Emily, I don't know why we're still here, but <laughs> I always enjoy the people I work with. Um, I started a new role about two years ago. I'm now a committee secretary. So it's really interesting being like really part of the business and finding out all the new activities that we're doing. Um, yeah, so I am married um, to a Holy Cross golfer. Don't oh, know how that happened. <laughs> I know. Um, but, you know, I think dating in the New York scene, like you're just lucky if anyone even likes golf. <laughs> so um, we ended up meeting on a dating app and he said, hey, they're nice golf swing. So, hey, husband, um, we have a 16 month old daughter, Elsie, and I'm actually pregnant with number two. So wow, definitely not golfing um, as much as I'd like, but <laughs> thank you. Um, but it was, a, uh, you know, you know, it's, it was great over, especially in quarantine when you got some fresh air. Um, I think that was all the questions. <laughs> so hopefully yeah. I, I hit all the good points about personal life. Nope, no pets, but we love to once we have a yard. <laughs> all right, Jess, you're next. Sure. And I, I didn't realize we had such an Allentown Lehigh Valley support here. So <laughs> okay. um, uh, I am in Malvern outside Philadelphia. I have three daughters and a husband. My daughters are 10, 7, and 4. So we're kind of getting on the other side of that baby stage and getting our life back a little bit. I would say golf has been our, um, you know, 
outlet and stress act stress relief activity during this um, time of the pandemic and our uh, girls have started playing more and more and it's been really fun to watch them develop in the game and hit that one shot that hooks them um, as far as career uh, so I started out leaving uh, uh, Bucknell. I worked at PwC for eight years, like many people who graduate from Bucknell started a big accounting firm. And I ended up working for uh, joining my client. Um, the, the company is Universal Health Services, and I was the head of their internal audit um, department for a long time. Um, and then in March, I switched roles to a revenue cycle operations role that deals with patient access, which is essentially getting patients into the hospital registered, scheduled. Um, and uh, I run that portion of the organization's business across the country. So it's been an interesting time to change roles, um, but it's been a really good time to learn for sure. And, uh, you know, kids, we're, we're definitely trying to um, manage through all the changes. The only constant is change. I would say that being resilient through those changes ha has been really critical this year. Got that right. We, we've learned to pivot a lot. <laughs> that was our big buzzword here on campus, pivoting. That's all awesome. much. Is it my turn? Yep. Okay. Um, I guess my first question is, um, what advice would you give me or any of the players that are in our program now um, about the college golf experience at Bucknell? And we can just keep the same order. So starting with you, Terry. Man, I have to start in the hot seat every time. Um, <laughs> advice for any current students. Honestly, just have fun and enjoy it. I think we've all alluded to it, how there's not enough golf in our lives at, you know, in our mid thirties. I won't give away exactly how old we are, but you can all do some math. It sounds like we have a lot of very wise accounting folks here. Um, so just have fun, go out, play, take advantage of the time on the golf course. Um, enjoy the time with your friends and your teammates and your friends on or off campus or digitally via Zoom these days. But I would say that's soak it in, be present in the moment because there's a whole lot of life to live afterwards and you can never get back the four years that you're in school. I can't even echo more of what Terry said. The only thing I would really add is um, if coach gives you access to golf balls that have Bucknell on it, take them. Do not <laughs> stop, just run and put them in your bag uh, because golf balls are expensive. And I learned that because I just ran out last year. So it shows you I that- think I'm I still have a sleeve. <laughs> also umbrellas still and still have gear, the occasional like, all of it. <laughs> um, but I'm so I hoarded my swag, any kind of swag. <laughs> so- yeah. <laughs> that would be one very important part of the advice. But I would also say, you know, connect not just with your own team. You travel a lot. You're together for a lot of the time. But, you know, use the alumni network and meet all the people on the other teams as well. Uh, Jess actually gave me a sand lesson after like a 12 on one of the par threes. So uh, I'll never forget that because I was really feeling for Tiger in the Masters when he had his 10. So it's like, <laughs> Been there, done that, already got that t-shirt. So, uh, you know, connect with them and use them as a network. You know, there's incredible people uh, that play golf and play collegiately. So I think you'll have access to so many, you know, great minds, um, not just at Bucknell, but, you know, throughout your competition. So connect. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, I think that's one of the biggest Find things that, for yeah. me too. Oops. Sorry. Um, just you get to meet so many people in the game of golf. Most other sports, you're playing against them and you're, you know, running past them. So you don't actually get a chance to stop and chat. So it's definitely a benefit of uh, playing college golf. Go ahead, Amy. Oh, no, that's good. Um, I think uh, definitely like to echo what Terry said. I felt like I was really good at staying in the moment, but it still goes by so fast. And I feel like my senior year, I had my job, like I had accepted it. I was just looking to the future. And I think I was just tired and I'm like, well, you know, okay, I'm not playing my best. And not that I, I'm mean, not that I regret where I'm at, but I so wish my senior year had gone differently. I wish I had been, had that same competitive drive. It's probably because Terry left. Like Terry wasn't there to kick my butt, you know? So <laughs> I feel like I just needed like some sort of 
going. I think after that time, that's the only life regret is, ah, oh, I wish I had done a little bit better my senior year. Um, I was really into my intern, it was an internship, my research in the summer. I was really into hanging out with friends and it's like, oh, I think I just done a little bit more with my golf. But I also, um, to Emily's point, like do as much as you can on campus. You know, obviously golf is number one, right coach? But, you know, just stay busy. And obviously it's probably different with COVID, but like I was a, um, a tour guide, you know, I was part of all these different things and just want a really well-rounded ex experience because like life gets real, real quick once you have a job and heck, I mean, I never was a good napper. I wish I had napped more in college. You know, you go to the gym anytime you want, just, you know, life definitely gets hectic and to take advantage when you have your ownership of your own schedule. So Jess, I'll let you answer the question and then I'll introduce Deirdre to everybody in a second. Sure, 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 sure. Um, yeah, so I mean, I mean, it, everyone has said, Absolutely, the number one um, takeaway is soak it in and it does go by fast. I will tell you that I think knowing your network and, and using that network as you progress through, um, even in the most unusual of situations where you, it's not something that is a direct correlation, um, it comes uh to benefit you or be um you know just a a positive step forward in your life so um that's my big advice well awesome so i want to welcome deirdre moran class of 2009 to the call deirdre was a four-year letter winner for the bison she led the team in scoring average in the fall of 2005 her best individual conference championship finish was 22nd at the 2008 big south championship she was a three-time member of the Big South Presidential Honor Roll, and she was a longtime member of the Bison Club Board of Directors. So, Coach, if you want to go back and ask uh, her question number one, I think that would probably be the best thing to do at this point. Yeah, hi, Deirdre. Good to, um, to see you. Thank you for joining us. Um, uh, just to update us on your uh, where you are, where you live, where you, your, your career, your family, and anything else you want to share with us. Wow. Oh my God, this is so much fun. Terry, <laughs> Emily, Amy, and I actually see Jess the most of anyone, if you can believe it. <laughs> um, so I am, yes, Deirdre, I am what, now 2009 grad. So uh, many years out of college, but I, I did everyone else go? I'm like, really wanted to hear. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was late. Ugh. Okay. So i um, living outside of Philadelphia working at actually Comcast now um, in a product and technology role, which is a little, um, nothing like my major, but has really been great. Um, and I get to play a lot of golf, even though I have a one-year-old, which I feel like um, Jess has guided me a bit. And um, both Jess and I play at this club called Stonewall, um, which is, I guess, gosh, and we're in the middle. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's in the middle of nowhere, yes. but it's a phenomenal golf course. Yes. And we'd love to have everyone yeah. come and join <laughs> us. I don't know if we mentioned that you too, Todd. So, um, but, but life is, could not be better. Um, I would say your, um, my twenties were very busy and now my thirties, I feel like really slowing down. <laughs> I don't have any plans anymore. Are we Wait all, your are we 40 all girl. About don't even go there. <laughs> oh my God. No. But COVID has been interesting, and um, but I still, I felt like my outlet is still golf through all that. But yeah, and I heard about, and that, was this all the advice that everyone was giving? Um, a little bit. I, I'll go, I'll say, I'll ask the other question is that, tell us about your recruiting experience and how you chose Bucknell. Oh, um, I had, um, I felt like a few people in my area had gone to Bucknell that I really respected, like a guy who played football, who was a star athlete and wanted to be a doctor and was my friend's older brother and so clear about his vision. And I was like very intrigued by like why he chose Bucknell. And I was, might've been a freshman in high school at the time. And then I like really was competitive in field hockey and thought I'd do that track. And then when I kind of switched to golf sophomore, junior year, I was saying to myself like, all right, where can I play golf and have a, ba a balance of academics? and fun awesome. and everyone knows I like and you know and then it really I think fit the every all my hopes and dreams awesome and that's, that's what it did Amy I caught Amy and Amy did you say that too balance 
I try. Yeah. <laughs> Tear into is always fun. Amy makes you laugh with the napping. <laughs> I'm still a terrible napper, but when she have a, a child, the, the whole advice is like sleep when the baby sleeps. I don't know. I, I can't do it on demand, but. I miss when, when D used to live in the city just because we used to get to see each other. And she went and left me for Philly. Yeah. The question Emily, you, where are you? Where's Emily? I am She's in actually my hometown. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> but was in Philly for a while when Zach was in med school um, and then moved up here. So uh, still get down to Philly as much as I can. So I'd love to come meet the two of you. Yeah, that would be great. Not too far. Terry's the furthest. Yeah, I don't see Terry coming anytime soon, but maybe, maybe we can get her. <laughs> so Aaron, why don't you ask Deirdre the question you asked, because I think that was the one that she was hearing the answers to as she joined the call. Sure, so my question was, um, what advice would you give me or any other players in the program today about the college golf experience at Bucknell? Oh, um, so I think, there, I feel like the, a lot of the college golf is like kind of laid out for you, right? You have your tournaments and you prep for them and you sign up and you, but I think like to this day, I still have friends that I met at the tournaments that have like helped me. Like it's remarkable. And, and one, I mean, some are like Philadelphia area people that I now tend to see more, but even when I was living in New York, I'd be like, Oh, we play college golf. And at Stonewall, um, Megan, the pro was like, I, all of us know her. She went to Radford. She was like always paired with us. <laughs> Bradford was right. Um, and so like kind of the relationships that you develop in golf at Bucknell, they all kind of lead to your first job and maybe your second job. And then even now at Comcast, like it, like I said, I'm in a role that I was um, not like totally gunning for. And it's all because of the relationships I built over the years and the experiences that I had. And so I feel like golf opened your, and, and I would promote golf. I mean, all of us probably feel this way, but like really, own net and this is like a life lesson of like always being very confident about your accomplishments and golf should be like really a major accomplishment of yours you've done so much to you know and not to say like compare yourself to others but you've done so much more than the average college student and you should um really highlight that and all the strengths and all this and all and the net and and any i would say like learnings that you had um while you know like if you learned a lot with a bad round or you learned a lot with a slump in your game. And so kind of always like highlighting the ups and downs when it comes, cause that's what life is like. Not just, Oh, I'm amazing. It's, it's a lot of like, I, I, I gritted through, I have grit. I hear that a lot for me. <laughs> right, Aaron. <laughs> um, great. That's awesome. Let's go. Uh, I'll, I'll start with another question and Terry, we'll go back to you because you're so good in the number one spot. Um, what was your most memorable? Don't say that to Amy. Don't say that to Amy. <laughs> She's going to be gunning for it after this. Oh no. Oh no. You guys are that competitive still. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't think so. I think we're good now. Terry did not like me freshman year. But let's all admit it. <laughs> oh my gosh. You it was good for us though. <laughs> oh, I'm not even going to go there. What was your most memorable experience as part of the Bucknell Golf, Pro Bucknell Golf Program? That's a hard one. There's like the micro moments that are like, I, I know Jamie Hayes isn't here, but I actually still have a copy of Jamie Hayes' country mix that we used to listen to in the van on our way to golf tournaments that like okay. I have two CDs in my car, one of which is Jamie Hayes' country mix. Um, so there's moments like that, that are, they, they seem so mundane, but are like really quite ingrained in my mind and are part of what made the experience so special on the golf team. Um, and then I think like a pinnacle personally, I, and as a team, like my senior year, we won the Bucknell Invitational, which was just so cool. Like I remember standing on the 12th hole and looking back and seeing the eight girls that I lived with all standing up at the top of the hill, like watching me play that round. And it was, it was just like all the things I loved were coming together at the same time. It was my good friends from off the golf course. It was my teammates who I had spent four years with on the golf course, um, having us come together to win a Bucknell Invitational in my four year career was amazing. And yeah, that one just like, really stood out in my mind. That's great. Emily? 
for sure the car rides. Um, I still can't hear some country songs without a real giggle. Um, you know, but for us, you know, Terry, absolutely. I remember it very distinctly, you know, and at the time, you know, I was playing okay, maybe in the four or five spot and coach came out and said, I need you to par out the court. I need you to par out. And I was like, okay, I'll try. Um, and what's funny is my freshman year at the Bucknell Invitational, he told me the same thing. And I went like triple, double, double bogey par. So, um, you know, fast forward two years later, he comes out and says like, I needed a par in. And I was able to do it, you know, and to be able to be there for that team, um, put a score on the board that I typically didn't shoot uh, freshman through junior year as I worked on my swing. Um, I was really proud. I'm just proud, you know, to be part of that team and be part of that, you know, major accomplishment in our history. So that was a really cool one. I think Amy and Deirdre, I think you'll guys remember when we were out in Oklahoma, you know, we had no business going to Oklahoma. <laughs> Here we are, you know, Bucknell and kids are so looking memorable. like, what's Bucknell, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, invited to that tournament. And then to, at the time, break the school record for us was huge. Um, and it was just a lot of fun and we had such a great year. Um, so just, I, I could keep going. That could be the whole hour long call if we could. Yeah. On numbers. That's great. Go ahead, Amy. Oh man, there's just, you're right. There's just so many, I don't know how you choose over four years when you spend two seasons and a million car rides with each other. And then we had, I think, two trips to Arizona, there was a, one or two to Florida, there, there was a lot. And I just remember even so many inside jokes from our ex first tournament, um, our freshman year, like me and Emily's, oh my God, like when I accidentally like ate batches fries and like I stole the <laughs> food and like, like, well, I guess Dartmouth's golf course also like is a ski resort, which kind of tells you all you need to know. I could barely even walk up some of the hills and I was like, what are we doing? We were terrible. Like coach was like, why did I, Pick any of these people to play at my school. Um, so <laughs> there's just so many. Um, again, I think, I mean, I think Fred was fresh, I think it was my freshman year at Big South. I, I was really sick, like really sick. And um, in fact, I had to move out of my room with Emily and batch to my, my dad's. I, I was really sick. And somehow I think because I was sick, I stopped thinking and getting in my own way. And I, finished that fifth place and I mean I wasn't eating like I remember I remember Jeannie in the car at home was like who didn't eat their fries from Chick-fil-a and it was me because I, I couldn't eat anything and I mean people had tell me to put a jacket on because I was so feverish I like wasn't wearing the right clothing and somehow I just was like in the zone and finally playing like to what I think was my potential and and I I think it was like 77 77 76 something like that and First, we got the call at a, at a gas station. I was the first person to make the Big South team. So I wasn't even there to get the award. But it just kind of set the tone of like, okay, I can do my semester wasn't really what I wanted out of myself as a player. And, you know, I had all the fun times and meeting the team and, and getting together. And then I was like, okay, the golf is coming together too. Like, this is a good start of something. And I think Amy chipped in from the water at that whole, at that tournament too. So I'm just saying. <laughs> also, does anyone remember Georgetown when the flag was in like this? Like we had no business playing there. I saw a five putt from three feet. And, you know, it's, like, <laughs> it's crazy experiences. How do you even, I can't even say that out loud. That's just so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we hit drivers on the par three. Oh, uh, anyway. <laughs> Jess, what about you? Oh gosh, the soundtrack, I mean, when I'm thinking about it and, you know, the songs uh, from freshman year driving to practice, right, because there were two sophomores, Hillary Manka and Bridget O'Mara, who would take the class of freshmen who were the recruits over to the golf course and, you know, we'd pile in the cars um, and, you know, I think thinking about memorable moments there were so many. Coach Jamison finally getting pulled over um, with a speeding ticket. My senior, oh. thought it would have happened way before then. Oh. <laughs> um, you know, always running in the airport. Always running in the airport. Terry, us getting on that plane, and it ended up having a fire on the plane. I think I was a chaperone, right? Um, yeah, you met us there. That was, I'm like. After I spoke, I was like, oh, yeah, that time that we had to emergency land in the Bahamas because in we were Bahamas. going somewhere like what? And yeah, where were, you, where were you going, Florida? 
We were no, we, we were, were going no, to the Dominican Republic. Uh, uh, Saint uh, Croix. Saint, Saint, no, we were going to like whatever the saint is that you don't need a passport because no one had passports. Like, <laughs> <laughs> <Saint Lucia? laughs> so there was no oh, yeah. Saint Croix. Oh. Uh, we got to oh, right. yeah, that's it. And you know there was a fire on the in the baggage um, area. And there was a volcano that erupted. I mean, literally, you can make <laughs> that was post college for me because I was a chaperone. Yeah, that was my freshman year. That was quite a journey. <laughs> God, we never made it there. Never. Um, but probably my most memorable, like true golf experience is Bucknell Invitational's um, junior year. Most of my teammates in my core recruiting class had gone and done a semester abroad. So I was solo. So, you know, I really formed a bond with um, some of the younger classmen and the upperclassmen at that time. And um, it was April, it was house party weekend. Um, I was in the lead for the Bucknell Invitational overnight, um, playing Sunday round and it's snowing. Um, I hit on the 16th hole, um, the wind was blowing pretty hard. So I went up a club and the wind just stopped, oh. blew the green. Oh. And Sid Jameson was there watching. And, you know, so talk about, okay, you gotta pick yourself up and try and figure out how to make an up and down. There's no room to land. Somehow I made an up and down. Somehow on the 17th hole, you know, I two putt it or I made a birdie on the 17th hole. And then the 18th hole, the, the, the most um, poignant part of that was I ended up hitting a drop down the middle, but then I was a hundred yards out, hands are shaking. I skull shanked it <laughs> almost out of bounds <laughs> and then made up and down. So resilience, right? It taught me resilience <laughs> and that's been a big key. <laughs> Wow. Deidre, I don't know if you can beat that one. That was no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I will just go with the theme of the map. Like, I feel like when I think about the United States, I'm like, I've been so many States because of Bucknell women's golf and I like, uh, South Carolina and like driving through South Carolina, driving through North Carolina. And, and I mean, we just were really, um, mobile. Right. And we didn't go to like many mobile North Alabama. Places. We were there too. What's that? We're in Mobile, Alabama, too. <laughs> oh, right. Exactly. Remember we went to the mall in Birmingham and we went to yeah. Anthropology? <laughs> did, you, did you guys have um, GPS through your entire college career? He had, so that he had the gold navigator. I don't, Lisa, I don't know if you're a car person. We're, I feel like he was a big car person. So he had the gold. It was gold. Yeah. Can you hear me? I, I might be frozen. Um. But he, I feel like he had a, he had a GPS. We didn't get lost often. <laughs> we got lost all the time, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it took us an hour and 15 minutes to find Princeton golf course. <laughs> that's that's really hard to find. That, that place is tricky. That's just, that's their fault. No, it's not. This place is in 96 <laughs> South Carolina are harder. Oh my gosh. Oh my he just got lost. Yeah. And then I also remember always getting new gear and in life, I don't, you know, I like one season I'll get like a glove. And a, a, when we played, I was like always getting new stuff. I'm like, this is amazing. Um, <laughs> oh wait, no. he did our laundry. That was nice. I wish he did my laundry. <laughs> I don't do the girls laundry. I kind of draw oh, the line no, there. Missing, yeah. uh -oh. Aaron, you better re rebel here. <laughs> Think it's against NCAA. I gave them a choice there. at the beginning of the, <laughs> the beginning of my my first year. I, I I had heard that Coach Jameson did that, and I was like, <laughs> "Look, I was like, I, what do you guys want to do your own laundry?" Yeah, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Aaron, Aaron, what's your favorite memory? Are we allowed to ask that? Because you're, oh man, because you're a senior, yeah. Yeah, I am. Um, it's more fresh in your mind than it is in ours. It's hard because. <laughs> When I think of a favorite memory, it's hard because I think I think of memories like you guys are describing the little moments and then also like my favorite rounds. Um, so it's hard. Um, I guess my favorite round was probably um, I had a, just had a really good tournament at Rehoboth Beach in Delaware. 
and we just all love that golf course, love that tournament, one of our favorite ones. Um, so that was a really good memory. Um, and then, let's see, it's so tough. There's so many good memories, so many little okay, funny I'm moments. Um, It'll come to you in 10, 15 I'm Just years. hearing people talk yeah, about, I I mean, about this, I forgot about this. I think, I think, yeah. Um, oh my gosh. I, I guess um, we, so we've traveled to Pinehurst twice um, in my four years. So um, the first time I got the flu mid tournament, that trip, um, it was actually at Kings Mill, but it was the same week. Um, and it was cold, like 39 degrees as a high. Yes. <laughs> um, it was horrible. Oh yeah. Brutal. Um, so that, that, I mean, that wasn't my favorite memory getting the flu, but um, we returned, um, I think, was it my sophomore year? Yeah. I think it was sophomore year um, and it was just amazing weather, completely the opposite, probably one of my favorite tournaments. Um, I honestly don't remember how I played, but um, it was just, again, the little moments. I just remember the practice round being so much fun. We were all just, I mean, yeah. taking it seriously, but it was just such nice weather in comparison to Pennsylvania. So <laughs> it was, it was just really fun. Um, we all had such a good time. We're laughing probably the entire practice round. So um, I totally forgot about practice rounds. Yeah. <laughs> so Lots of you all and and like memories are coming, coming back. back. It, it, and yeah. visualizations of Colonial Williamsburg just came back. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Black Heath yeah. course. No, we played it the other one. Hard. Oh, you did, Amy? No, we did. We The boys played at Kings Mill. We played at, um, shoot, what's it called? I don't Black remember Heath. anymore. Black Heath. No. Sports colony. Uh, oh, oh that's it. It. Sports colony. it was always, dormant. Yeah. It was always yeah. dormant when we went to go play. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of dormant, yeah. like, yes, it was always yeah. yellow and dead. <laughs> it, I know. I, and that's another thing in, in real life. We, I don't, you don't have to play in all types of weather. That was yep. very distinct college. And if you yep. forgot your rain gloves, how screwed you were. Yeah. Oh God, we used to practice on, when it would snow, we practiced like on the driving range, like in the middle of the driving range. We didn't have this fancy indoor thing. setup, indoor thing. No. <laughs> we had outside, that was it. We had to shag our own balls in the winter. We, we still, ha we yeah. still yeah. have to do that. <laughs> we still have to do that, so. We had virtual golf. We had the, the screen, the face track. <laughs> it's never right. Um, <laughs> Got these random That's things awesome. that you remember now. Oh my God. <laughs> um, Terry, who was the teammate you admired the most throughout your career and why? I think it actually goes back to Amy. So as much as Amy might have said that freshman year, you know, I I felt threatened if I'm being totally transparent. <laughs> I was the big solo sophomore and here came a freshman who you know, made me question my abilities. Um, and I think I didn't realize, I realized more so in hindsight, so it was after I left Bucknell, how resilient and focused and driven Amy was, um, both on and off the golf course. So I equally was like, you know, I was a little psych major who had fun and barely studied and enjoyed my time and Knowing what I know now, I could not fathom being a biomedical engineer, also playing a division one sport, also doing all of the other things that Amy was involved in. Um, and I think, so it might not have been at my time at Bucknell, but I've actually reflected on it a lot in terms of who I looked up to, who I, you know, wish I had spent more time getting to know, actually getting to know Aww. better in my four years. And it was you, my dear oh, friend. Thank you. I mean, I was going to say you too, but am I going to still say that? <laughs> I think so. I think so. <laughs> Well, no, I'm I not just... choosing either one of you, so it's fine. <laughs> um, okay. we, had an, we had an incredible team, you know. I'll I'll go. Yeah, yeah. The decade that we yeah. were in, there were just so many, you know, epic players, you know. And I wish Jamie was on the call because I think um, as much as you thought Terry hated you freshman year, Amy, I think we were all just terrified of Jamie. Um, it, <laughs> I was the only one not scared of Jamie. If you remember, I was, I was the only one that got a ride from Jamie. That was, you know, everyone else, I, I would either walk or get a ride from Jamie. And because I, I don't know why. I don't know. She, she didn't scare me. Like sweet, sweet innocence. Else. Sweet, sweet innocence. But uh, <laughs> our senior year, Amy and my senior year, we had um, Katie J, Dr. Yep. Katie J, uh, oh, join right. our team. And for me, she's somebody I just continued to respect. She is a 
a dear friend. She's passionate about golf. Um, and she just made us better, you know, and it, it elevated my game for sure, because I think um, her level of calm and her sweet nature um, was a quiet leader, you know, and as a freshman, she really helped us, you know, become a better team. And I think that's why we played so well our senior year um, was to have somebody like a Katie as a freshman come in so strong um, and just be such a, a, a great person overall. So uh, adore that kid. Uh, wish she was here with me, um, but she is just the person that I really looked up to. Yeah, you know, KJ was great. Yeah, because um, well, actually, I always, I always, KJ was great, and I, I feel like again, I wasn't my best self as I was with Terry. Like I feel like Terry just really pushed me to practice harder, do more, because I feel like it came so naturally to her. And again, I, I kind of felt like I played golf like later in life, like relatively speaking, like most of the kids I feel like we play against started when they were like five or seven. Terry's just this natural athlete. I can't even, I skied once, Terry. I had to take the skis off and walk down the hill. Like they had, cause they were gonna rescue me cause I kept falling. Cause I thought I was on the green bunny trail and then I on the blue one and it was bad. Um, but I really appreciate golf in that moment when I was skiing for the one time in my life. Um, but she just like really just pushed me to, I feel like reach as much of my potential as I could while playing in college. and. Um, when she was gone, like I didn't have, I mean, KJ was great, but then I think like, I don't know, there was something about me and Terry together. And I just think, you know, we, we pushed each other to be better. Awesome. Jess. Oh, on my mute, mute button. Um, <laughs> so I have a different perspective of Jamie than you all. I was not afraid of her, <laughs> but she did bring that, that sort of life to every um, moment and, and, you know, we got our kids, everyone together um, two summers ago in 2019, and it was amazing. Um, as far as teammates that I admired, I probably thinking back and reflecting like Terry has, I, I remind, admire elements of everybody's personality. So, Catherine Cruz was tenacious and, you know, you couldn't get her to back down at all. I mean, she, she was convinced she could hit a nine iron onto the green of hole number two. And, you know, we would tell her hit the damn five wood. <laughs> she finally did. She made a hole in one, <laughs> you know? Um, and, you know, Amy and Molly, uh, I mean, Amy and I still get together and I consider her a lifelong friend growing up playing Pennsylvania golf with her in, in juniors. And, um, you know, I think there's so many things that I can learn from each of them. And I did learn from each of them. And I kind of take those positive um, attributes and try and, you know, mold my own you know, pathway forward as well. So great. Yeah. Deidre? Um, I'll, I'll finish, but yeah, kind of like a, feels like there was three phases of like, we looked up to the girls that were older, like everyone talked about Jamie, everyone talked about Jess and then Hillary Manka and Brad, like there was this like older generation and that was their <laughs> legacy. And then we came in and it was really like, I'm looking down Terry, Emily, Amy, and this like new kind of guard of a different phase of women's golf. And we had lots of really great accomplishments. And then I had this whole nother set of people like Brittany Rendell and um, Kelsey Mabin and obviously Katie and Leah and just like a, a great group of super smart, just such driven girls. So I feel like I have like three distinct phases. I, I feel like I know this, this group the least in terms of, but I'm like following Lisa's emails. I'm like, this is just like, there's just so many categories of great women who are driven, smart, motivated, and like continue to get better. And so I feel like if I was on like the first team, I was on the second, th two and third team, right? And I, and I have like very unique respect for each one of these girls. And then I, I'm really excited to see this like next phase of, um, of really good golfers coming through. Like I, you announced the freshman, which I feel bad for any freshman right now because it's such a different kind of year. Um, but it's just so awesome to see. So I have respect for everyone. Is that a good, I'll go ahead. Oops, sorry. Roundabout answer. Go ahead. Yes. 
Um, I'll go ahead with my second question, which you guys already kind of touched on, but um, what advice do you have about networking um, and really finding the right job after Bucknell? Oh, yeah. I could talk about this one. That's on this one, because anyone who knows knows that I ran away to Club Med to go work at a resort right after Bucknell. So I did my only round of networking happened on the golf course at the Rutgers Invitational with a recruiter from Goldman Sachs. And I said, no, thank you. And then went to go work at Club Med. So I will let everyone else share <laughs> networking tips for I'll existing I'll students. My first job was with the Bucknell women's golfer, Christine Wiley, who was even older than Jess. I think she's four years older than you, maybe. She's like 10 years older than me. Um, and I wrote to her like, and you guys, I just caught the tail end of when Amy joined the call, but she, someone was like, oh, network. Like I reached out to her cold and I was like, I see you work at a sports agency. Um, can I ask you about um, opportunities? And she like wrote me back in five minutes. She's like, oh, I have one. And it did set me up for success. But I will say, I actually feel very passionately. Like I've learned so much about networking and it's the simplest things, which is be clear about what you want and always no matter what follow up like I can't get over the amount of people I talk to that just don't follow up and I'm like are you serious like even if you're my family's best friend like you just have to follow up and that's like to me if you can be true to this to getting clear like being clear about what you want with the person and then following up you will see results you will get what you want and it will pay whatever that is I, and what it, what is your major you were saying um, I'm a markets innovation and design major okay. in management. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. Well, Sounds so like fancy. You have a, okay. <laughs> everyone that? else can go, but I'm really curious if you have an idea about what you want to do. Um, not really. I think I wanted, I mean, I obviously I want to do marketing, um, and design. I've done a lot of stuff with, um, web design and web development, um, with past internships. So I really like um sort of like the marketing agency type work but um who knows okay we my should. mind is open <laughs> I feel like a few of us can help you okay I'm looking at Terry but my Lulu not looking at me <laughs> oh no <laughs> all right but I don't know in marketing. Terry, Terry like sells herself <laughs> short about our first two couple of years but now you are like at the coolest company ever and it's very true. And I will double down on what Dee said. Um, actually, Minju, who's not here, but also is a member of the Bucknell Women's Golf Team, she and I have been um, connecting back and forth for about six months now. And I'm just trying to, you know, see see what else we can find for her um, that might be at Bucknell. So to Dee's point, it really is just reach out, know what you're looking for. Um, and the follow-up is really key because I know I'm far more, when someone shows they're committed, I'm far more committed um, to the relationship as well. I'm going to take a little bit different angle. Um, and I would say, you know, when you're traveling, when you're out and about in the community, you know, don't be afraid to wear your Bucknell gear. I've just met so many people that are so proud to say like, oh, did you go to Bucknell? I'm a Bucknellian too. And I think you just meet so many interesting people that way that either are an alumni, um, have a child that went there or just a big fan. So um, I, it's a big network of people out there. I think we're very proud as an alumni organization um, and have a right to be, you know? And so I think when you wear your gear and you wear it proudly, you're gonna meet more people. Um, so wherever you end up, uh, don't be afraid to hit that bookstore uh, before you leave campus. Uh, if it's my turn, this is, I wanna, maybe don't be me. Maybe actually like, <laughs> as, as you're saying, as dear just said, like cultivate the talent of networking. Although I love to talk, I think anyone who knows me personally knows I love to talk. I never I felt like I learned the art of networking. I don't, maybe I should talk to the engineering group because I don't think we focus on a million presentations and reports, but I don't know if we learned how to network. I actually found my job because a recruiter came to, to Bucknell. So I kind of lucked out with that one. Um, but my husband, he found his job through Holy Cross alumni and it's a very small firm. Like I can't imagine starting my own law firm at the age of 26 years old and then finding two other people to build the business with. Like, I can't even imagine that, but that's how my husband found his job. Like, cause a partner um, uh, that was a Holy Cross alumni found it just cause he happened to ask around and hey, somebody knew someone who knew someone who knew someone. Um, so I think, and like, and like Emily said, like, you know, I'll just be around Jersey city and I'll see someone in Bucknell gear and you get talking, you're like, wait, you also work at Goldman, you do this, you know, this person like, so even though it hasn't gotten me 
you know, an additional job or an opportunity, like you have to remember those people. And like Derek just said, you have to follow up. Like I've taken um, part um, participation in leadership courses at, at my firm. And they're like, listen, this, this course is a great opportunity, not just for what you're going to learn, but who you're going to meet, stay in touch with those ladies, keep that relationship going. And of course, if a lot of people I've kept in touch with have moved on to different companies, but we keep in touch, even if it's on social media, just to stay connected, because you never know where that can bring you. But I wish I was more comfortable doing it. Um, and it's taken me time in my career and I can definitely still improve. So start now and just keep practicing. Awesome, thank you. Just yeah. So just to just to play off of Amy a little bit, I mean, it's it's it goes beyond your career. It it goes to your life, right? And their your relationships that you're building help support your life. Um, I know when we had um, our child care fall through for the sixth time this summer, I sent out you know blast messages to everyone in my network. And it ended up being someone I used to work for and his niece was in between jobs waiting for her next job to start. And she's now my babysitter. And to me, that enabled me to continue my career because it was a, a, a to the point where both of my husband and I have very demanding jobs. He's a partner at a wealth management firm and I had taken on a new role. Um, in my current company that was, um, you know, really busy at the time and um, continues to be busy. And, you know, I think you'll never know um, how a relationship or connection will help afford you an opportunity. And telling your story um, and sharing your story, um, going back to Deirdre's point about your accomplishments, um, you know, be proud of your accomplishments. And, and I think it, it makes you memorable. Uh, I can't tell you I'm terrible with names. And I can't tell you how often I need to get better with names because I'm more often than not people come back to me and remember my story um, more often than not. Um, I've got one more question for the group. Um, what advice would you give me as the current head coach of the program? Perry, you want to start it off? Sure. What advice do I give you as the current head coach of the program? I'm a huge proponent of balance and a big advocate of balance. So I, I know that my career at Bucknell was so special because of what I got to do on the golf course and what I had access to off the golf course. Um, and I think it actually made me more committed to my time on the golf course. I really valued when I was there um, because I also knew I had other places that I wanted to be and I was allowed to be. Um, so I think that's, that's it for me. Great. Emily? I would say you have a greater impact than just a golf swing. Um, I think from a mental aspect, you know, you're really doing you're coaching, you're not just coaching a golf team. Um, I think, you know, I still go back and this is cheesy, but in my little Bucknell kind of golf folio, I still have the notes, you know, that coach Jameson gave us, you know, and I look back at those. Um, and I actually just went back and read like the Dr. Bob Rotella book, because I think it, it, it's relevant to not just golf, but to professional life as well. So mention um, that book. It, it's great. You know, Timeless. <laughs> And he, um, he wrote little quotes to us and he'd have it in our golf bag. So when we play, you know, we'd pull out our little notes and there would be kind of like some sort of like impactful, inspirational message for us. Um, so I think your reach is so much greater than just golf. Um, and it's still, I, I, you know, however many years later we are here sitting here, you know, still has an impact on my life personally and professionally. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, Amy. I think um, actually the note reminded me of one thing because Coach Jameson got me really wrong one time. So that's my second point. But I think the first point is, I just remember when we had fun practice sessions. Like, I think there's so many times you just go to the range and you hit balls or, oh, I have to qualify to play again. Like we're playing another nine holes, 18 holes. And that kind of gets wearing. But I remember when we'd have like chip offs or like fun putting contests. And 
I didn't honestly I remember even sitting there for a long time. We had to make like a hundred three footers in a row or something like that. But like then I I had torments where I made anything under five feet that kept me alive because I was scrambling all over the place. I just remember keeping practice fun and not feeling like it was dry. And it just made it, I don't know, I just made it more enjoyable and 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 wanted me to practice more. But I'd say the second tip is definitely know your player because again, I like to talk. And at one point, Coach James is like, you're not allowed to talk to anybody. Like, you need to be more serious. He's like, you're going to go on that first tee, and you're going to be like, hi, my name's Amy. I'm not allowed to talk to you for the rest of the round. <laughs> the entire first hole, I Aim. was explaining, like, well, why can't you do that? And I'm like, oh, I, my coach won't let me do this, blah, blah, blah. And I ended up talking the whole time. But, then, like, I then got quiet. And then I played terrible because <laughs> he learned that my stress outlet is talking. Like, I don't, you know, maybe I don't care if it bothers anybody else. But it's like, I needed to get it out. And then I was able to calm down and play. So get to know your player and what fits them, not just like your idea of, of what's going to make them succeed. Yep, absolutely. You got to, we got a talker on the, on the call with this. Uh, my senior captain is a talker and I know that. <laughs> got to get it out, coach. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Usually it's just your here too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm right. Um, I feel like I'm in good company with Amy with the uh, talking, you know, coach would always say by the third hole, I knew everybody's life story. So I, I oh, yeah, it was I had easy. to get the muzzle put on me. Like, Be more like Hillary. She doesn't know their name at the end of the round. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but but yeah, going back to keeping things fun, you know, things get so serious in life so quickly. And I think, you know, golf is a lot of individual sport, but learning those team reliance activities, like the chipping contest we talked about where you have to, can, you know, chip 12 consecutive shots as a team within a foot circle. Otherwise you can't go to dinner, right? So that's pressure, that's team reliance, that's coaching support, et cetera. I mean, I always... I, we go back to that chipping contest and I use it with my daughters now, you know, teaching them the game and passing the game on to them. So the circus that we bring out to Stonewall every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I like that. Idea. Idea. Deidre, Lisa, how about you? Lisa, you're doing such a good job. You know, and I said about the Brad and the Kevin and then your legacy, like you can already tell you're making a really, um, positive impact just I love getting your communication and keeping us posted and I feel like you're bringing in great girls and um I think you have a hard, it's going to be it's hard I know women's golf. okay if we're elephant in the room a little is that women's golf is the smallest program and we usually fall behind I know in like our budgets and, I, and I'll be curious to see what happens I don't because my cut and my cousins go to I have three girl cousins I have many cousins three of which are girls that go to Brown and they got, got their program cut. You know, one's one just graduated and one's actually now a sophomore. Um, and they all play women's golf. And I saw Dartmouth, they got their program cut. So it'll be curious to see what happens with us. And I know that like, if all the positives that we just talked about, I really hope it maintains because it transformed my life. And it is still giving me back a lot of, you know, life's lessons life's relationships and I do hope that that continues and so um I you know we are here to support you in the many phases that have come before but I really commend you on all the great things you're doing just right now thank you there's a reason that. Deirdre was elected to that position of director or something I don't know what she was <laughs> but like she's amazing <laughs> But I think going back to Deirdre's point, we, we need to figure out how to build this alumni network. You know, we, we just spent an hour together, a little more than an hour, and probably could talk for three more hours about crazy, you know, experiences, stories, et cetera, connect. And we need to figure out a cadence where we do more connections um, to remember sort of the fundamental now established in us and and figure out a way to give back and further our, our own legacy you know mm -hmm. as, you know we started the program we built this program uh, 10 years in we are the founding members of this program and I think it's a a really unique 
um, position that we are in and we need to figure out a way to get us all more engaged as a group and you know, talk about our relationships and friendships and stuff. And I, I think it's really important for us to try and build that and, and grow that. Yeah, I agree. Totally. Definitely. <laughs> Coach, any closing comments you have before we wrap it up? Uh, no, again, thank you for joining us. It's it's so great. You know, I email you guys on a regular basis. And like I said, I, I've met Jess and I'd love to meet you all someday, um, you know, get you all back to campus and have a big party once this COVID disaster goes away. But just thanks again for being on the call. It was great getting to put uh, names to faces. And I, I hope we can work with each other and keep in contact and, um, over the next several years. So thank you again. Well, coach, thank you. And I'm going to turn my comments first to Aaron. And Aaron, I want to thank you for taking the time out to, to be on the call tonight and keeping our fingers crossed that come <laughs> spring, you and the rest of the team are out there on the links playing competitive rounds of golf uh, and kicking some butt in the Patriot League. Uh, you know, that's what we're all hoping for. Nobody knows what's going to happen, but, uh, you know, as coach mentioned earlier, we continue to pivot in any direction we need to. And we've learned a lot throughout this pandemic. Uh, you know, it's, it's not been great that you guys haven't had competition, but it, at least Bucknell student athletes have been here on the in person with each other this fall. And there's so many schools around the country and more than half the Patriot League where that was not the case. So that's, that's a positive we can take away from it. But anyway, thank you so much, Aaron and best of luck to you. And then ladies, wow, awesome. I knew this would be a good session. They always, <laughs> um, I, I really appreciate what you all did as members of the golf program while you were here. More importantly, what you have done since you left Bucknell and how you continue to represent Bucknell women's golf. And Jess, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, this is a group that we should be able to bring together and there really are no excuses because, you know, there aren't that many of you on a team to begin with. So therefore, the three decades that we've been playing, there's not an overall huge number of women's golf alumni at this point. So we should really be able to rally the troops and, and get everybody on the same page. And whether it's continuing to do more events like this or whatever mm -hmm. it is to bring you all together, I think those opportunities are going to be really important. So thanks for that suggestion. And again, thank you all for, for what you do for Bucknell. And then for those of you at home that tuned in to watch tonight, thank you for doing so and go Bison. <laughs>